In this video, you will learn what index lifecycle management is and how to set this up for your Elasticsearch deployment. When you are ingesting time series data such as logs, the amount of data will keep growing over time. Yet, there's a limit that a single Elasticsearch index can handle. Creating indices too big or too small will affect the performance of your cluster. Index Lifecycle Management, also known as ILM, will help you solve this issue. ILM ensures high query performance and reduced costs by periodically rolling over the data to new indices. As data gets old and infrequently queried, it can be migrated to less expensive infrastructure. You can set up policies that will define when Elasticsearch will create a new index and when the indices will move to other nodes. It helps you optimize your performance and cost. To start ingesting your time series data to Elasticsearch, send your data to a data stream. The data stream, along with the ILM policy, will be responsible for managing underlying indices. When you start ingesting data to your cluster, you need high-performance infrastructure to bear the pressure coming from the indexing operations. The data will be sent to hot nodes. The hot nodes are dedicated to ingesting and processing frequently queried data. Once an index reaches the desired size or age, the index will roll over a new one that will be used to ingest new data. After the rollover, the old index will be transferred to a warm node. Other operations can also be applied, such as reducing the number of shards and segments of your indices. The warm nodes are used to store less frequently queried data. When data gets old, it is less likely to be searched. When this is the case, the data will be moved to the cold tier. As data transitions into the cold tier, it can be compressed and shrunk. The cold nodes can be allocated to an infrastructure with lower specs than warm and hot nodes. The cold tier is still a responsive query tier, but the data becomes read-only. It is cheaper to store data on cold nodes, but the queries will be a bit slower. Once data is no longer being queried or being queried rarely, it may move from the cold tier to the frozen tier. Data stored in a frozen tier will be stored in a snapshot. This reduces local storage and operating costs while still letting you search frozen data. Because Elasticsearch must sometimes fetch frozen data from the snapshot repository, searches on the frozen tier are typically slower than on the cold tier. Eventually, you can set up your ILM policy to delete the data. You can do so if you are no longer required to store some data and you know that you will not be searching for it. After learning the concepts of ILM, let's take a look at how you can effectively set up ILM for your cluster. The first step is to create a cluster. If you want to use the different data tiers, you need to make sure to have nodes with roles assigned to the tiers you are using. Let's create a deployment that will have hot, warm, cold, and frozen nodes. Connect to your cloud console and click Create Deployment. Give it a name, choose the cloud provider, region, and the stack version that will be used for your deployment. Next, click Advanced Settings, where we can manually select the nodes that will be part of your cluster. As you can see, we already have two hot nodes in the cluster. If we click Info, we will get more information about these nodes. Notice the roles associated with these nodes. This is how ILM will know where to allocate the indices. An index in the hot phase will be allocated to a node that has the role hot. Let's add a warm data tier. Click Add Capacity and add two more nodes to the cluster. It's important to have at least two warm nodes so you can ensure data resiliency with replicas. When clicking on Info, you will see that these nodes are using different hardware with a higher disk-to-memory ratio. These nodes will have the Data Warm attribute. Next, add a cold data tier. For this tier, one node will be enough. Unlike the warm tier where you are using replicas to ensure resiliency, the cold phase will leverage snapshots to save space. Finally, let's add a frozen tier. Notice that this node has a much higher disk-to-memory ratio. It will be used primarily for storing snapshots and searches must be rare. After setting up your nodes, click Create Deployment. Download the password to a safe place as we will be using it later to send data to your cluster. After a few minutes, your deployment will be ready. Click Continue to open Kaban. Next, define a policy that we want to apply to our logs. Under Management, select the Manage Index Lifecycles tile. In this view, you can create a new policy or update an existing one. 
By default, Elasticsearch will create a policy for the logs that you are sending to the cluster. Let's take a look at it. Click on the log policy. You can see that this policy is already attached to multiple index templates. When you will be ingesting log data with the Elastic agent, this policy will be automatically attached. Next, let's update this policy to fit our needs. Start with the hot phase. The first step is to define when the rollover should happen. Recommended settings usually work best for your use case, but for the sake of simplicity, we will shorten the hot phase. We are going to set it to a maximum of 10,000 documents. When one of the three conditions is met, a new index will be created. In that scenario, the number of documents will be reached first. After rolling over the index, we should move the index to the warm phase. You need to define when the data will be moved to this phase. If we set the age to zero minutes, it means that the index will move to the warm phase as soon as all its actions from the hot phase are done. In this situation, it will be moved just after the rollover. We can also shrink the index by reducing its number of primary shards. Having multiple primary shards is great to scale for indexing operations, but once you are in the warm phase you don't necessarily need multiple primary shards. Next, let's activate the cold phase. The index will be moved to this tier phase once it reaches the age of 5 minutes. We can also convert the indices to fully mounted indices. This will use snapshots to back up data and we don't need replicas. Then activate the frozen phase. The indices will reach this phase after 10 minutes. Finally, you can decide when to remove the data. In this scenario, we will delete all the logs older than 1 hour. Save the policy so we can start sending logs to your cluster. We will use the Elastic Agent to send logs to your Elasticsearch cluster. If you come back to the Cloud Console, you will notice that the disk allocation of your hot nodes has slightly changed. There is some data indexed in these nodes. Now, let's see if the ILM policy we defined is behaving correctly. Open Kibana and choose the Dev Tools. By default, ILM checks for indices that meet the policy criteria every 10 minutes. We are going to reduce this interval for an easier demonstration. Next, open Stack Management and select Index Management. In the Data Streams tab, you will find the log's generic default stream. This is where the elastic agent we configured is sending the logs. If you open this data stream, you will see that this stream is attached to the logs policy we just updated. Also notice that the stream is linked to the logs index template. Let's open it to see how this is configured. On this view, you can see that any indices matching the following pattern will inherit this policy. If you click on Preview, you will see the settings and mappings applied to these indices, including the lifecycle policy. If you are using a different method to send your logs, you will need to make sure that you have an index template that links your logs to the policy you want to apply. You can create one from this interface. Let's move back to our data streams. When clicking on its number of indices, you will be able to visualize the indices attached to this data stream. So far we have only one index which has less than 10,000 documents. Let's wait a few seconds to get more than 10,000 documents. After a few seconds, you now have two indices. The first index has a total of 13,588 documents and a second one has been created. If you click on the name of the first index, you can see that the index is correctly attached to the logs policy we updated previously. You can also see that this index is currently in the warm phase. The second index is in the hot phase. Let's open Stack Monitoring to visualize the shards allocation. Open the Indices section and filter the indices by the name of your stream. If you open the first index, you will see that this index has a primary and a replica shard. The shards for the first index are allocated on nodes 2 and 3, which are warm nodes. The shards for the second index are allocated on nodes 0 and 1, which are hot nodes. After 5 minutes, let's go back to index management. You still have two indices, but the name of the first one changed. If you click on the new name, you will find that the index has been moved to the cold phase. Notice also the storage size of the first index changed. For the same amount of documents, we are using half the disk space. Reopen Stack Monitoring to analyze the shard's distribution. You can see that the first index only has one shard. The replica has been removed. You can also see that the shard has been moved to node 4 which is a cold node. 
If you wait long enough you will see that the frozen phase will kick in and the logs will start being deleted after one hour. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up ILM for your Elasticsearch cluster.